when my daughter started to sick, then I took her to the hospital. They said, let me go at the pharmacies to buy these syrups. Then I go at the pharmacy, buy these syrups, but the sick never rest. It's there I lost my daughter. Alusain Bangura's daughter was just 10 months old when he buried her here. She was one of more than 60 children poisoned in Gambia last year by tainted medicine produced thousands of miles away. India is known as the pharmacy of the world. The country's booming $50 billion pharmaceutical industry has been hailed for bringing affordable drugs to the masses. But along with that success comes new dangers. We lost our kids. We have to do something. We know that they, they know that we lost our kids. But still now we don't hear nothing from them. Yeah, we want the justice for our kids. This year, drugs with the same kind of contamination have been turning up around the world, from Central Asia to the Pacific Islands. I traveled to Gambia in India to investigate how these drugs were contaminated and what India is doing about it. I remember this uh, seven-year-old child that I was called to, to see. In the morning, we dialyzed the child, and I sent the child to ICU so that the monitoring would improve. And in the afternoon, I got there, the child was still unconscious. The next morning, before I came back, I was told the child is dead. In the summer of 2022, dozens of children started showing up at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital with the same mysterious conditions. Their kidneys had stopped working. Four-year-old Aisha Darbo was prescribed an anti-nausea syrup after she came down with a fever. You know, sometimes it's not easy to say much about her. Only that I can say she's smart and clever. Mm -hmm. After taking the syrup, Aisha's health condition deteriorated. You don't want to eat nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Soon, she was at the hospital. On that day, they allowed me there to be there. Mm. Yeah. She asked to be with you? Yeah, she wanted me with me. <laughs> Within a few days, Aisha Darbo was dead. Tests show the medicine she took was contaminated with a toxic industrial solvent used in brake fluid. The drugs were made by Maiden Pharmaceuticals based in India. So how did poison get into those medicine bottles in the first place? Syrups consist of a tiny amount of active ingredient suspended in a watery solution. In order to dissolve the active ingredient, drug makers add propylene glycol, a harmless, clear, slightly sweet liquid. But sometimes, chemical dealers will try to pass off other chemicals as propylene glycol. These other chemicals are called diethylene glycol and ethylene glycol. They're much cheaper and highly toxic. Both of these poisons were found in the Gambia drugs. After news broke about the deaths, India said it would investigate what happened at Maiden Pharmaceuticals. But then the nation's top drug official claimed Maiden's drugs were fine and that they didn't kill anybody. In statements to local media, Maiden representatives have said they didn't do anything wrong and that their drugs weren't to blame. They didn't respond to our inquiries. India's health ministry also didn't respond to our inquiries. Behind me is the uh, Maiden Pharmaceuticals plant. Uh, we asked to go inside, but the uh, security guard said nobody was allowed in. The pharmaceutical industry is a big economic success story for India. Criticism of Indian drug companies is often seen through a nationalist lens. 
Now, the government has said that the exact one-to-one -one causal relationship of the death is not yet provided by the World Health Organization. The government has raised certain questions to WHO that is there any specific link, link saying that the 66 deaths are directly and exclusively linked to the cough syrup? I spoke to a retired drug executive who advises the Federation of Pharmaceutical Entrepreneurs in Delhi. How you are so sure that the drug was responsible for death of the children. Indian pharmaceutical exports are growing. And naturally when you grow, you definitely enter into field where somebody else was there earlier. And his business is being harmed. So there may be a ploy against the Indian companies. They're to defame the Indian companies. To see that the Indian companies' exports are limited. Healthcare watchdog groups in India say that drug regulators there often see their role as promoting the industry rather than policing it, and that they don't have the staff and resources to keep tabs on some 10,000 drug factories. Even when the WHO uh, was, you know, issuing multiple alerts that the root cause of deaths of 70 children in the Gambia is directly linked to an Indian-based pharma manufacturer, still the government was in uh, complete denial. WHO recommends all countries detect and remove these products from circulation to prevent further harm to patients. Three independent labs confirmed the contamination, and an international panel found the syrups led to the deaths. Indian drug regulators could have gotten to the bottom of it. Instead, they called the whole thing fake news. And I quote, there is no direct casual relationship between cough syrup consumption and deaths of children in Gambia. Not long after that, kids started dying elsewhere. This time it was in Uzbekistan. About 20 children died. Uzbek authorities traced the problem to imported cough syrups made by another Indian manufacturer. They were tainted with the same poisons found in Gambia. Then a dozen kids died in Cameroon, and suspicion fell on another Indian manufacturer. And more bad cough syrup turned up in Liberia and the Pacific Islands. Where are the bad chemicals coming from? And where else have they gone? We visited a warehouse in Delhi where some of the chemicals used in the syrups came from. It was recently destroyed in a fire. The owner wouldn't talk to us. Since the outbreaks, India's drug regulator has tightened rules for syrup exports and crack down on some companies making substandard drugs. But it continues to deny that Indian drugs were to blame for the deaths in Gambia, and it hasn't figured out where all the contaminated chemicals are coming from. At the end of the day, nobody has been charged. Nobody is taking responsibility. I'm sure if this was in any European country or North American country, maybe this won't happen. Meanwhile, drug makers continue to make medicine with little oversight and ship it around the world. If I go, I stand crying there. She told me to stop crying. Who did? She said. She told me to stop crying.